I'm really curious to hear from both of you about um, how etymology <laughs> drives both of you and how, um, yeah, when did your use of etymology start and how do you um, find it driving poems in a different way than when you began? Um, I don't know when my interest in etymology started, but it certainly was sharpened by my practice as a lawyer. Uh, you know, kind of common law is a practice of finding history in phrases. I mean, you take cruel and unusual punishment. I mean, to, to take that to a judge and to be like, well, I've looked up all these words in a dictionary, you know, you would be laughed out of court. What that word is is the sum total of its usages over time. I mean, the word, you know, exists as if in historical hypertext, and you click on it and you get this wonderful pass through history. And I feel like, you know, a lot of the words we use you know, windows open when you, you know, uh, it achieves a certain historical simultaneity when you use these terms and you kind of understand what it is that they mean. When you, um, you know, I remember being curious one day about like uh, it, writing a poem uh, about the word cataract, like how it can mean both a waterfall and also uh, an eye. Um, you know, a problem with the eye, and it turns out cataract is the from the Latin uh, cataracta, portcullis, right? A, a door that has closed, um, that grill work. And to know that is to be able to stitch together in time all of these moments, uh, the way that I think Robert so often does in his poems. Uh, a lot of people don't know that Monica and I are blood relatives. Yes. <laughs> I'm his father. Uh, <laughs> um, she engendered me. Mm -hmm. long ago. And begot you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had looked at cataract in that same spirit. Exactly. That it was mm -hmm. a door that comes down like mm -hmm. this, and mm -hmm. they thought that's why your eye clouds up. Uh, one I love is it, sometimes the mo I always say to, I used to love to read the dictionary as a kid, and I loved reading it and wandering around in it. And it's much more interesting to look up words you know the meaning of than words you don't know them. Because I even love the style of the dictionary. Any of several forms of blah, blah, that are, you know, I just fell in love with it. Uh, it was my favorite book when I learned how to read. And uh, one I love is thing. The word thing. Mm -hmm. It was a verb. Thing on the, the parliament, I think it's in Iceland or Denmark, it's still called the thingstead. Thing on is to discuss. To thing is to have a conference, avoid violence by talking. And so it became the, like the modern expression only has a thing about that. It's a thing. It comes from, it's literal. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything mm -hmm. is a, a chorus of voices. I, uh, I, I feel like in the poems I read, I seem to be more preoccupied with being Jewish than I really am. But I, <laughs> but I can't help saying that as a child, I did hear another language than English. And uh, my mother and my grandmother spoke Yiddish with one another. And I was very aware of the sort of Germanic sound of some words and the Latinate or French sound of other words. I thought about it. Uh, it's a wonderful thing where Philip Roth says, as a child, he was embarrassed to use the word spatula. He thought it was Yiddish. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think that in, for me, it was part of that. And I can remember having trouble in school that it's the words were used as though they didn't have that other meaning. So the nominative and accusative and the dative and the ablative, the teacher could have explained it. And that it was like they were, mm -hmm. they didn't have that history. History is interesting. Mm -hmm. So history of words is just one example that everything comes from somewhere. You know, this has a lot of parts. That's the gutter. Uh, this is the spine. This is a perfect binding, which doesn't mean it's great. It means it's poured into glue. Anyway. Yeah, and I think that to be obsessed with the thingness of what you work with is what it is to be an artist. And to be a poet is to be obsessed with the thingness of words. And one manifestation of that is the history of words, right? What makes uh, words not, uh, in the words of my friend Jim Langenbach, a transparent container for meeting, right? Yeah. Um, and then Black Acre encourages you to have oh Gold yeah. Acre and Red Acre. Exactly. And they, it sounds good. You know, it's, it's part Helpful. of it is just that. Mm -hmm. You know, and thing you use your, your tongue goes to your upper teeth, mm -hmm. and then it's back in your glottis. Mm -hmm. 
It's, this is our material. Yeah. 